and welcome to another surf report merry christmas everybody this is our holiday edition of the surf report we have some amazing insights um, coming in the astrology and what is showing up in the collective unconscious and the I Ching reading that we're going to provide uh, brings a lot of insight as to what we need to be doing through the next week. This one from uh, December 25th through the first of the new year. Let's get started with the summary slide. And I want to highlight this area down here. This congruency score is probably the lowest we've seen. But with the subjectivity in, say, the dream bot and the astrology, it might be a little bit more congruent than what I'm making out making it out to be. But what it looks like is a lot of easy energy, easy to change, uh, but it's going to be a humbling time. This is the influence, remember. So the astrology is as follows. We have a solar eclipse on the 25th that's sustained for, well, some argue for a full year, so that energy will be here. There's these Uranus trines that we've talked about, and those are going to be still present. Um, actually, these are going to be the main uh, aspects in this coming week. Then we have Mercury transi uh, transiting into Capricorn, and then, of course, the new year. The dream bot's showing a little bit different. Um, of course, we have the, uh, the you'll see this is a the strong Christmas thread in there. Um, but we also have like grit and, uh, the, the, the ability to endure is in the dream bot. And, um, I'm wondering if that is grit through the change. In other words, well, the, the grit has to show up when there is change. Grit doesn't really show up when there's no need to persevere. So, uh, that kind of, that is, that's pretty congruent there. But then the I Ching says humble and modesty is the influence. It's kind of the, uh, kind of the letdown at the end of the cycle. And that that's really congruent with the new year. So it's not really out of, out of ordinary. And they even make reference to the sun cycle and, uh, being high in the sky and going, uh, low and darkening and all that. And I do apologize if there's noise in the background, I'm just going to keep going. Um, we got family in the house, so I'm just going to keep persevering and I hope that that doesn't mess anybody up. Let's talk about the dream bot. Now, word number one at the very top, Jesus. And uh, this f seems fairly obvious to me, January 25th. Um, it's a, you know, Christian uh, holiday and... But if you really look at it, there's the rest of it, other than giving, there's not a lot of words that represent Christmas per se. So I went ahead and broadened it out to more of Christianity in the red arrows. And then the grit shows up in the blue um, arrows with starting with character and pushing forth and shred rock, that kind of thing. Um, so anyway, so Christianity and grit, just like I mentioned before. All right, now let's get into the astrology, which, and I forgot to get my little tool out, focus tool. Let's do that. So we're looking at um, this area here. We have Venus again in um, Aquarius, as we mentioned last time. Um, Mercury is actually moving into Capricorn. That's about halfway through the week. So on the weekend, and we'll talk about that. And Mercury is still in I'm sorry, the sun still in Capricorn. So Mercury headed where the sun currently is. Two main aspects that we talked about, we started last week, which is the sun trying Uranus. And that's going to mean the ego is going to see some changes. It's easy to change. Ego might be seeing some insights, easy insights, because that trine is easy energy. Sun conjunct Jupiter. And um, in Capricorn, that's all throughout this week. And so because there's um, Sun conjunct Jupiter and Sun trine Uranus, it's also Jupiter trine Uranus. So anyway, let's proceed down. For those of you watching on 
uh, today, 25th of December, we have a new moon in Capricorn, but this is a more than just a new moon. It's moon conjunct sun, obviously in Capricorn at four degrees, but it's also a solar eclipse. And that happens at 1113 PM on the 25th central time. And, um, of course it's at night, so you're not going to be seeing any sort of occlusion at night, but, uh, in other parts of the world, you will. Um, so what is this all about? It's, uh, it's a new moon in Capricorn. So new moons are new cycles or a new sort of identity, especially with the, uh, sun and, um, the sun in Capricorn also, um, this one is about earth, earthy signs. What can I get done practically? And the new me is the, the, what I can put here and now on this objective and get it done. Now, all of this concluding Mercury, is it uh, still technically, um, well, almost within conjunction of the sun? It's trying with Uranus. All these players are trying. So Mercury, Sun, Moon, and Jupiter. Jupiter being optimistic and very, you know, positive, opening, insightful, very deep, wise, uh, wise positive. And um, e emotions are trying. The sun is trying. So it's, you know, quadruple easy change. If Uranus represents change and insight, that's the predominant thing. And I'll just go ahead and, and warn you, all these aspects are going to be in every profile on every day. So we're, we're looking at change over like a morphing over this next week. And you personally, ide identity of sun. I mean, this is a, this, this trine or these trines are perfect for the new moon uh, eclipse, solar eclipse. It's, it's actually absolutely perfect for newness. You can also, um, you know, the, this is also like a kind of a new year's resolution kind of time too, because we're getting towards the end of the year, Capricorn sets goals. So resolutions are a, sort of a goal. I would go ahead and set those now as be a great time to, um, carry those out. I don't, you know, the, there's a lot of people who poo poo the new year's resolutions and, you know, I'm kind of one of them, but the, as you'll see with the I Ching this, this week, it's wanting you to just, if you see a problem, get out there and get it done. Don't wait, don't plan, don't overthink it, just get it done. And that is very, uh, Capricorn. Um, so that's all commensurate with the, uh, solar eclipse. And some people say that energy is going to you know, it's going to influence you. You is kind of like a timestamp, and whatever um, energy is there in your stamp, that's depending on what house you're in. What whatever house this solar eclipse is in, that's the area of your life that's going to be stamped per se um, in the coming year. All right, so that's tonight at eleven thirteen. You can put set some positive intentions. Um, on what it is you want to see in your future and possibly making this facilitated change um, swayed more towards your soul's path or what you desire personally. Going into Thursday, December 26th, this chart's at 9 a.m. You can see everything I just talked about is still the same other than obviously the moon is now not conjunct with the sun. You have four trines here. You might as well include the the south node as well, making it a fifth sort of pseudo uh, uh, trine. I almost said conjunction. Okay, so not much change there on the 26th. 27th, Friday, um, we're adding a square. So emotions are now kind of blocked from the change. Uh, you don't have the buy-in, the emotional buy-in or emotions might be conflicted, but there's opportunity here to carry it out. The emotions with this sextile over to Mars can carry out something. It's, it's a total buy-in on the ability to get it done. Okay. 
Uh, then on Saturday, Mercury heads into Capricorn. I have that listed or circled in the chart. This is at zero, zero, zero degrees, zero minutes of Capricorn at 10.56 p.m. on the 28th. That's Saturday, Saturday evening, central time. And uh, so Mercury now is, is is commensurate with Jupiter and the sun. And well, might as well include Saturn and Pluto in there too. Everyone is gold driven. Everyone is very practical as get it done kind of attitude. Mercury is um, maybe maybe kind of thinking about all of the things that are still undone. It's kind of more of a Virgo thing, but still an earth sign Capricorn and wants to achieve, wants to get things done. That's the men mentality right now. And this is going to be the biggest um, disagreement with the rest of the influence. The rest of the influence is kind of, um, it's, it's not time to really be starting new projects and, and all that. So this is, but this is a good planning tool. So you can start planning for next year, uh, you know, a month out, maybe next week. We don't know. We don't know what that reading is going to look like, but, uh, it's a planning sort of alignment, not necessarily a doing alignment. Um, Sunday, the 29th, you have another square that what you you know, your emotional buy-in to get things done is no longer the case. That's going to be kind of more of a laid back feel, just kind of lay back and let it happen. Uh, let the changes happen. Don't, don't be uh, trying to stop those changes. Monday, the 30th is a day of more of opportunity as you see more sextiles developing with the emotions, um, opportunities with change. And we already talked about that, um, in terms of using the emotions to affect change. And then a sextile over to Mercury and, and Jupiter. So just a lot of opportunity. Sextiles signify opportunity. And that's going to be mainly on Monday as you start that new week. On Tuesday, it goes back to uh, being blank. There's three trines still. It's on the waning side of this. This is just about done, but it continues. The energy is still there. On the 31st, this is around 12 p.m. on the 31st. And I wanted to show this because there are a couple of other uh, sextiles. So some more opportunities with the way they sh things should be, Saturn. And uh, transformation, which is Pluto. So some opportunities, if you read your emotions, if you watch your emotional body, you're going to get those insights. And then this chart is a little bit later. It's, uh, well, 12, let's see, it's, uh, what did I do? Did I do a couple of them? So I guess not. Um, oh, I'm sorry. This one is right at... <laughs> <laughs> the one I just mentioned is right at one, uh, 12 o'clock on the new year as, as we roll over to 2020 because it's 1159, 59 PM. All right. So in one second, it's going to look like this. All right. So this is uh, the next day. This is the evening on 2020, uh, January 1st, and we have... Mars in conjunct Uranus. Hmm. So there's some agitations. There's an agitations, possibly some adjustments are going to be needed in terms of how you get things done. Um, and then the very last of this, uh, the trines from Uranus, that's kind of drying up. We have Mars with a trine over to the moon. Moon. Okay. So here's what I, I have for your new year's resolutions. This is, this is uh, January 1st, 2020. The moon is making a trine over to Mars. Okay. So that energy is, is easily, uh, buys in to get things done just like we talked about before, but it's squared off to your thoughts and squared off to Jupiter, which is the positive side of things. So emotions don't feel too positive. Um, so if these have anything to do with New Year's resolutions, which I would beg that it does because 
got to be emotionally invested in New Year's resolutions. Um, that trine over to Mars gives you the ability to get it done, to actually carry out those New Year's resolutions. But they might be feeling constrictive. Maybe you um, were overly optimistic about what um, resolutions you would make. Okay. So let's go to the I Ching reading so we can kind of summarize all of this up and give you some insights about what you need to be doing and thinking about in the next week. So we tossed the coins and the coins came up with hexagram 15, earth over mountain. We have a total yin. Yin side is soft, accepting, receiving, and then of course the mountain. And so the mountain represents obstacles. So it's humbling and um, it's, it's receiving, it's basically receiving obstacles. So it's kind of very humbling and modest. All right, so let me read from the Book of Changes. It is a time of happy ending. The maximum result is achieved, but the result always gives rise to something new. There comes time of transformation. Great becomes small. The old breaks down. Time is changing. And new life blossoms from the ashes. This is um, thinking about in the calendar year. This obviously is applies because there's a new year coming on. But in terms of um, solar cycles, there's it's also cyclic because the sun is at the uh, lowest point in the sky on the 21st recently. And then three days later, now is starting, the days are starting to get a little bit longer. So there's like a it's a double happy ending there. It's a new cycle on two sides here. So it's no coincidence that the I Ching picked up on those cycles. It is the law of heaven to make fullness empty and to make full what is modest. When the sun is at its zenith, it must, according to the law of heaven, turn towards its setting. And at its nadir, it rises towards a new dawn. So as it mentions the solar cycles in this, and that's exactly what I just talked about with the uh, winter solstice. Now, we did have line one, and so let's read what that means from the Book of Changes. A dangerous enterprise, such as the crossing of a great stream, is made much more difficult if many claims and considerations have been taken into account. On the other hand, the task is easy if it is attended to quickly and simply. Therefore, the unassuming attitude of mind that goes with modesty fits a man to accomplish even difficult undertakings. He imposes no demands or stipulations, but settles matters easily and quickly. Where no claims are put forward, no resistances arise. In general, we are sustaining, we are rolling with changes, but not resisting changes. We're getting things done when we need to get them done. And uh, that's it for the influence. When we apply this change line, you get hexagram 36. This is the solution. We asked, we asked I Ching to supply us with a solution to maximize the influential energy. So what we got was hexagram 36. We're now look at yin over fire, earth over fire. So now we're more of accepting um, strong strong energy, fire strong, yang, um, brightness. But, but So here's, if, if earth or the yin is on top of the fire, we have brightness hiding. We have darkening of the light. And that might sound like a really bad thing, but that's a very commensurate actually with what's happening again with the winter solstice, what time we're in. This is the darkening time and light is starting to get longer and longer each day, but we are in the darkest period of, of the year, literally. Sun has left the ground. Situation is dif difficult. Judgments and actions are wrong. It is important time to stop and retreat. Otherwise a great trouble may happen. You need to find clarity or a long stagnation will come in business. Refer inside yourself. Perhaps the case of difficulties is in the absence of a clear goal. Isn't that amazing? With all the uh, with Mercury now going into Capricorn, 
We talked about New Year's resolutions and the aspects around that. And then now the basically the I Ching is suggesting that you create clear goals. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so there's one solution. Then here the sun has sunk under the earth and is therefore darkened. That's incredible too because that's exactly what's happened in this time period. The name of the hexagram literally means wounding of the bright. Hence, the individual lines contain frequent references to wounding. Um, as above, so below. And um, when, you, when you have the sun in its lowest uh, time period, that energetic influences on us as well. So it could feel like wounding. That's the humbling that we talked about before. One must not unresistingly let himself be swept along by unfavorable circumstances, nor permit his steadfastness to be shaken. He can avoid this by maintaining an inner, fi inner light while remaining outwardly yielding and tractable, tractable. With his attitude, he can overcome even the greatest adversities. So what are we saying here? We're saying that on the outside, we're looking assertive, we're looking, con, um, you know, uh, uh, pleasant, we're agreeable, all that kind of stuff, but we're not sacrificing on the inside. We're not, um, we're not giving in to just everything and we're keeping our light bright, but not shining it out to the world to see, keeping, keeping it within with a surety, with confidence and assertiveness within yourself. So here's the final uh, comment from the Book of Changes. In a time of darkness, it is essential to be cautious and reserved. One should not needlessly awaken overwhelming enmity by inconsiderate behavior. In such times, one ought not to fall in with the practice of others. Neither should one drag them censorously into the light. In social intercourse, one should not try to be all-knowing. One should let many things pass without being duped. Okay, so let's look at the final solution slide. And here you have it. Um, this picture is really the only, I couldn't find a solution picture, but the influence picture was fairly kind of easy. It's, it's a humbling energy. And um, you can imagine this guy's change was involved in death. And that's not really what I'm, um, I'm here to propose, but um, I picked this picture because the dream bot had the Christianity in there, a strong Jesus reference, and so I thought this picture was perfect, and he's also humbled. Uh, you, your change in your life doesn't have to be that humbling, but some of you might be going through that. And um, so the influence is there for big change. It's easy change. It's easy in that it's going to happen and there's nothing you can do about it. It's bigger than you are. You can be busy resisting all that change and you're not going to get anywhere. In fact, that's only going to be counterproductive because resistance dovetails into illness, disease, and conflict. So the solution then of all this is being cautious and reserved. Don't be a know-it-all according to the I Ching. Gratitude for what comes, but don't be shaken. Remain steadfast, but don't let your light out obtrusively. In other words, don't feel like you have to make your opinion known. Make sure you don't have to yell demands over everyone else. Just stay reserved, stay quiet, but don't sacrifice yourself and don't let your light burn out. Go forth humbly and assertively. All right. All right, uh, that's all I can think of for now. I really hope everyone has a wonderful uh, holiday season, including the Merry Christmas, including the tonight's, if you're watching this on the 25th, a very happy uh, solar eclipse. Start planning up your new year, some things that you'd like to achieve, and uh, enjoy your new year. We'll see you next year. Cheers, everybody.